Hello again and welcome back. Today we're going to take a few minutes to discuss what bioinformatics is. Bioinformatics is an exciting interdisciplinary field that started back in the 1960s. The 1960s was historically a time where computer power advanced significantly and we are now able to use faster computer power in order to analyze larger and more complex data. So bioinformatics uses computers to combine biology, chemistry, and physics with statistics and mathematics and various forms of engineering. And the overall goal is to use computers to interpret and analyze biological data. This can be done looking at sequences, structures, or functions of genes, genomes, or any of their associated products such as microRNAs or proteins. Generally speaking, bioinformatics can also be called computational molecular biology. This is a subset of computational biology, which can also use computers to look at other things, such as bird migration patterns. Now, there are divisions within bioinformatics. Within science in general, there's basic science and there's applied science. Basic science wants to understand knowledge and generate it just for the sake of answering questions. Applied science, on the other hand, uses what basic science finds and applies it to real-world problems. So the same thing can be done within bioinformatics. We can develop methods or statistical software tools. This would just be basic bioinformatics, or we could take those tools and methods and apply them to understand a particular real-world problem. Of course, these basic and applied divisions can overlap, and they can also cause a feedback loop. So in that way, when we apply basic knowledge to a real-world situation, we can find other questions which then can be better answered through basic science approaches. And as we mentioned earlier, we can also divide bioinformatics by the type of analysis we want to use. If I'm looking at sequences, for example, I could be comparing genomes between organisms, looking at how they're evolutionarily related, aka phylogeny. I could take a look at the actual sequences and predict parts. So in other words, what is a gene? What's going to encode a protein? What are the regulatory regions, such as promoter regions? We can also take a look at sequence alignment and use that for prediction. We can also look at structure, structure of proteins, structure of nucleic acids, whether that's RNA or DNA, double-stranded, etc. We can classify proteins and nucleic acids based on structure, and we can also compare those structures and maybe use them for predictions on function for example. And of course then we can take a look at functional analysis, gene expression profiling through microRNA, pathway modeling, protein-protein interactions, or maybe asking the question of where a protein resides within a cell. So there's all sorts of different analyses we can do in bioinformatics. Using those approaches, there's a lot of areas that are actively being worked on. Bioinformatics is essential for basic genomic and molecular biology research these days. We use it extensively for drug design through knowledge-based drug design. This has helped us not only identify new novel synthetic drugs, but also improve existing drugs, make them more effective, make them less toxic, for example. We can also use that for personalized medicine. We can take a look at bioinformatics from a diagnostic standpoint. So for example, taking a look at someone that might have cystic fibrosis, um, the genes that are associated with that, taking a patient sample and seeing if those genes are present and what their, dip, what their variations would be. And of course, understanding those variations so we can personalize treatment options for cystic fibrosis patients, for example. We can also customize crops through agriculture biotechnology. We can make crops resistant to Roundup, for example, or to withstand freeze better, 
or to produce things that we want them to, such as higher nutrient contents. We can also use biotechnology and bioinformation for um, forensic DNA analysis, molecularly looking at the phylogeny of samples and identifying where they came from. And a lot of this forensic DNA analysis is now admissible in the courtroom. And overall, one of the really exciting areas of bioinformatics is systems biology, creating simulations of molecular and cellular processes, using them to mimic the environment and the world around us, um, and also for prediction um, when we can't create these environments in the real world. Unfortunately, bioinformatics uh, also has some limitations. Because it's a computer-based approach, it's reliant on the quality of the data that's generated experimentally. So for example, if I'm looking at gene expression between two cell types, if the microarray that was run in the laboratory that tells me the expression levels of my two populations wasn't done correctly or has errors, well, then my computer is going to have errors as well. We're also limited by the sophistication of the computer algorithms that we use. So again, as we take those basic science questions and apply them into real world problems, we will then have to go back and tweak those algorithms to better adapt to these situations that we saw in the real world but weren't able to model prior. So our algorithms are constantly evolving and becoming more robust as well. And of course, bioinformatics just makes predictions. And because of that, any outcome from bioinformatic approaches is not considered formal proof of concept. They're great for predictions, but we need some sort of a real world analog. So example, a wet bench laboratory experiment to prove um, that what we have in the computer realm is true for what we see in the real world. Right. Well, hopefully you've learned a little bit more about what bioinformatics is and what it does and what it can't do. I look forward to showing you some of the databases involved in it next time. Have a great day.